Well, hi. Do you guys want to see a new antenna? Come closer. A little, a little closer. Come on, get closer. Whoa, that's too close. Go away. <laughs> guys, I've got a new antenna. I was searching eBay just for ham radio stuff, and I came across a company called Ten Tennas uh, out of Tennessee. This is a little antenna. It's a little uh, 49 to 1 antenna for QRP, 65 watts or less really on sideband, a little bit less than that on CW and digital. And uh, we're gonna take a look at this. We're gonna cut out some uh, wire and tune it up and see what we can do with this little guy. It's awesome. Stay tuned. I'd like to say thank you to these guys. They're my newest members over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, please head over to patreon.com slash KMRD radio stuff. So 10 tennas made in the USA by a gentleman uh, by the name of Walt, November Echo 4, Tango November. And all you have to do is simply search eBay for 10 tennas and you'll see two options. There's this option and there's a higher power option that I actually ordered first and made one and ended up giving it to my dad because he needed an antenna for his RV. So I have another one of those on order. But he just sent me uh, along this one to try out, so I figured, why not build it? Because I need more antennas, so yes. So it comes in a 3D printed case uh, that's, that's very well constructed. And you've got a wing nut here on the top. This is for the radiating element. And then you've got another wing nut down here if you need a ground wire, a counterpoise. And then it has a BNC jack on the bottom here and it's all screwed together. Uh, they're actually fairly uh, weather resistant. I, my neighbor actually saw the first 10 tenna that I bought. He ended up buying one and now there's an 80 meter 10 tenna uh, that's strung across our street into uh, going from his house to the neighbor's house. So <laughs> there's a lot of 10 tennas in the neighborhood here. So I wanna open this up and show you guys the construction and then we will uh, cut some length of wire and tune it up and see what we get. Look at that. Look at that. Nice big toroid. I don't remember the size of this, but it's a decent size. There's actually some, some decent thickness magnet wire in there. Nice solder work. Nice tight wraps around our primaries. 14 total lines, making a 49 to one. And they're really cheap. This is like 35 bucks, something like that, plus shipping. Now, as far as antenna wire is concerned for projects like this, there's really two kinds that I prefer. Uh, this is the 26 gauge wire that Soda Beams uses for their antennas. I actually purchased this from Soda Beams last year. I got like a 300 foot spool of it. Uh, and the main reason I like this is because of this yellow jacket. It's just more visible. You know, when I was first getting into portable radio, I wanted everything black uh, for stealth, but as I have come to learn, the second you put up an antenna, people want to walk into it. So I prefer uh, the nice yellow jacket of the Soda Beams wire. However, as a wire in general, I really like this antenna wire. This is poly stealth wire. This is, these are both 26 gauge wire. This is poly stealth wire from Davis RF that you can pick up from, uh, I believe it's amateurradiosupplies.com. I'll leave links in the description for all of this stuff. This is a copper clad aluminum wire. It's really strong. It's really silky smooth, very malleable. It doesn't kink, but I can't find this in yellow. If I could find this poly stealth wire, I don't think they make it. If this poly stealth wire came in yellow, um, this would be the only antenna wire that I, that I would use. Be really careful. There's only a few strands in this wire. So what I'm gonna do is strip a little bit more and fold it back on itself. So I'm just going to bend this over. Now, don't forget to put your heat shrink on first and just kind of cram it in like such. Oh, yeah. That's a nice flow. Beautiful. So I've got my trusty Harbor Freight 100 foot slash 30 meter tape measure. And we're going to use one of these little S beaners. These uh, I got from Pactena. I'm sure you can find them just about anywhere in, online. But they've got these three holes in there that's great for uh, strain relief for attaching the other end of the antenna and hoisting it up. So that's all the parts we need. Let's get outside and cut some wire and tune it up. 
All right, so how are we gonna make this work? Well, we're gonna unscrew this guy. And we're gonna attach our wire. Then I'm gonna stick a stake in the ground and attach everything to this. And then our tape measure's got a little doingy thing on it here, so I'm just gonna kind of attach everything to this carabiner on the stake, run it out. I'm gonna go about 68 feet, and then we'll trim it for resonance. So now that we have everything connected together, pretty much, I mean, we might be an inch apart, so what? Now we're gonna walk down the street, watch out for cars if you're gonna play in the street, and cut, uh, I'm gonna cut it at 68 feet. Wish me luck. Let's make the cut. Whew, it's always nervous doing that. And now that we've forever sealed our fate with the length of this antenna, we're gonna take our little S-beaner and use it as a strain relief. And I'm just gonna start basically at the end of the wire and then we'll put it up in the air, put it on the analyzer, see where it's resonant and trim accordingly. But that gives a great strain relief there. Perfect. So I just wanna show you how I have this deployed now. Uh, I've got the feed point up, probably about six feet in the air and then the wire is just going right across the street and into the uh, seven meter soda beams, carbon fiber mast. And the wire is kind of just drooping down. It's probably, you can walk under it. Cars can maybe drive underneath. <laughs> but this is kind of typical of how I'll have it deployed uh, in the field. So, okay, so let's take a look at what we've got. I'm gonna tune this for 40 meters. We're a little less than 2.1 to one, right at seven, but as we go up, it's getting a little bit higher. So it's actually resonant somewhere in the 6.8-ish range. Okay, so we've got our antenna pulled down. Now usually I just cut random lengths, but this time I'm actually gonna measure it. I just wanna cut off six inches and see where that gets us which is uh, approximately one and a quarter bow fangs for those who are wondering. Let's see where we're at. Ooh, went down. Still a little high. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna cut five inches off of this just because I'd rather not cut it too much. These are pretty broad banded, but I'd rather not screw it up. So now we've cut off 11 inches. Let's take a look. 1.7, so we went down a little bit, not much. Still three to one at the top end of the band. Now before I cut any more wire, I decided to just twist a whole bunch of it to see what happened. So I ended up twisting about 16 inches of wire together and that significantly dropped our SWR. It's still not perfect, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. We'll just go ahead and Cut it right there, why not? And we'll throw this back up. This might still be a little too long, but I think we're gonna be a bit closer now, hopefully. I'm also using my Gochur 10 meter mass now as opposed to the carbon six. Figured maybe raising it up a little bit would, would matter. It, it didn't really change anything, so. But this is the fun of antennas. I love experimenting with this stuff. So now after cutting that, look at that. It's going down a bit more. And uh, we're still under three to one at the top of the band, so I have to cut off a little bit more, I'm thinking. I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna do maybe eight inches to start, just because I, I think we're kind of getting into like fine tuning it. So let's go with that. I think we're probably gonna end up cutting it down right to about 65 feet, but I don't wanna overcut it. It's better to do these in small increments to really fine tune it. So let's take a look at it now. Interesting. It seems to be better though. Like it's not going as high in SWR. So I think we're getting pretty close to the sweet spot here. 
Oh yeah, 15 is looking really good now. And 10, 10 is looking really good too. So yeah, that's that's pretty wide right there, under two to one for the sideband portion of uh, 10 meters there. Now here's a whole scan of the band and you can see it's kind of, it's below two to one on all the frequencies there. So I think I'm gonna stop uh, where I'm at. I don't know if I'll really get any more by cutting this. So at the end of the day, our total length ended up being pretty much exactly 65 feet, or for those of you across the pond, 19 meters, 80 centimeters. All right, so now we've seen what the analyzer thinks of the antenna. Let's see how the radio feels about it. I've got the 705 set to CW, we're at full break in. I've got the meter setting on so we can see the power here. Uh, here's our SWR and uh, on the low side of 40 on CW, we'll key up and the SWR meter is not even moving. So that's great. Here's the middle portion of 40 meters. SWR is climbing a little bit. 1.2 to 1 maybe, and now up towards the top, a little over 1.5, 1.6 to 1 maybe, so very, very acceptable there. <laughs> Signing with the, uh, <laughs> with the microphone. Now here's the bottom of 20 meters, a little bit of SWR there, 1.1-ish, not much. Towards the middle, nothing. It's actually getting better, which is fantastic. And the upper portion, this is absolutely perfect. Does not get better than that. 15 meters, let's see what we get. A little bit there on the lower side. A little bit more towards the middle now. Nothing, perfect. A little higher. Flat. And at the top of the band, nothing. Gotta love that. And now we're on the lower part of 10 meters. Nothing, not even moving, not even moving. Go up into the phone portion. Ooh, just a touch, just a touch. Top of the technician portion. Rising a little bit, 1.2, 1.25 maybe. Go up a little bit more, 28.8-ish. Climbing a little bit, still under 1.5. Let's get crazy, let's go up here. Now we're at about 1.5, so huge bandwidth on 10 meters. Way out of where I'd ever use this antenna. Still 1.6, 1.7. Very nice results. A Mexico station here, X-Ray Echo 1, X-Ray Romeo. Let's see if we can get them. Kilo 8, Mike Romeo Delta. Yeah, Roger, I've got you 5-9 here in Texas. Correction on the call, it's Kilo 8 Mike Radio Delta. Mike Radio Denmark, QSL. Kilo 8 Mike Romeo Papa is correct. Mike Radio Denmark, Denmark, Delta, Delta. Okay, Denmark, Kilo 8 Delta Romeo Papa. Kilo 8 Delta Romeo Papa is correct. Negative, sorry. Kilo 8 Mike Romeo Delta, Mexico Radio Denmark. Okay, correct you call. Roger, you are solid 5.9 into Texas, just running 5 watts on a uh, NFED uh, antenna. Thank you so much for the 5.5, man. Good night, good day, 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 good day. Thank you, 73, bye-bye. 73, QRP. So that's a look at the 10 antennas, QRP 49 to 1 antenna. A really neat bit of kit, a very good price. Like I said, I think it's 35 bucks for the antenna. Use whatever wire you choose to use, uh, but the 26 gauge wire, either the Poly Stealth or the Soda Beams wire is pretty inexpensive. So uh, definitely uh, under a hundred bucks for sure. Uh, really probably after, after you buy some wire, you're probably gonna be in like the $60 range for this. And first contact just got Mexico. <laughs> On five watts so uh, that was pretty awesome it's hearing all kinds of stations I'm not in the greatest location for RF I'm literally surrounded by power lines on all sides so it's very noisy here 
but I love the size. It's small, it's compact, it's very lightweight, definitely potable. So I will be doing another review of this antenna out in the field, but I just got it in the mail, had some time. So I wanted to build an antenna tonight and I did. Uh, very, very easy. It took uh, just a few trimmings of the wire to get it resonant. Basically just cut it 65 feet and you're good. Uh, exactly 65 feet um, should be perfect. So thanks for watching K at Emerty Radio Stuff, guys. 73.